to Qatar now and speak to senior reporter Melissa Reddy. Right, Melissa, hello again. Ronaldo's options, what are they now? Well, the most plausible one, and even that is a little bit unrealistic, is sporting. You know, the manager there has spoken about what a dream it would be for Cristiano to return, the romantic storyline it would create, how much of an uplift it would give the club commercially, but still his wages are out of their realm. So unless he's willing to take a quite significant financial hit, you know, that even seems out of the equation. They said it, it seems impossible to make that happen. You had Napoli ruling out a move for him. You had Bayern saying he's a fantastic player with a fantastic past. Now, Chelsea were probably the club closest to being really intrigued by the proposition of having him at Stamford Bridge. But we know that Thomas Tuchel did not want him at the club. That was part of the friction with the new ownership and why he's no longer in situ there. Now, Graham Potter also is not really wanting Cristiano Ronaldo as part of his plans. He's trying to build a progressive and dynamic Chelsea side moving forward. And really what, what Chelsea were interested and intrigued by was the brand Ronaldo, uh, the social media following he cultivates, the new markets he would open them up to. It wasn't really the essence of Ronaldo, the player, and, and this concept of being guaranteed goals. So what we can say actually by this interview is he must not have very many options or he doesn't have a strong hand to play, which is why he's going out on the offensive, trying to control the storyline, trying to put United in a position where they uh, scrub off his contract, tear it up and give him the agency of, of freedom. And maybe he thinks in that way it will entice clubs further. But I don't think you give this interview and you sort of tarnish your legacy and burn bridges if you do have a strong negotiating and, and if you do have clubs lining up to sign you up. Melissa, how is Eric Ten Hag going to handle this now? What do you think his next steps will be? Well, you can't have a player and a player of the stature of Cristiano Ronaldo publicly saying he does not respect you. That is a really, really horrible thing for a manager to deal with, especially one in the formative months of his reign who's trying to create a new culture, who's got the rest of the squad on side, really. If you, if you think back to all of the interviews the players have done, Bruno Fernandes, um, David De Gea, all the senior players have spoken about the discipline he's instilled, the standards he set and how important it is. So there is zero way back for Ten Hag and Ronaldo. Ten Hag, to his credit, has tried by all means to deal with Ronaldo in the best way possible by not antagonizing him and also by not you know, trying to jeopardize the club's position of he's not for sale. That stands from the summer. Ten Hag was trying to balance out, you know, the path he's trying to create forward and also not undermine uh, United not wanting to sell Ronaldo and wanting to have a strong negotiating point in that essence. If you think about perhaps how Sir Alex Ferguson would have handled the situation, he would have been a lot more aggressive and a lot more ruthless than Ten Hag has been. And I think moving forward, that's now the only option for both the manager and the club. You cannot have a player doing what Ronaldo's just done. This interview cottoned on to everything else, all the other disruption he's caused. Ronaldo is going to the World Cup. You are already there. How are things looking out in Doha ahead of the start of it on Sunday? <laughs> well, it's hard to escape the fact and, and to start at any other point beyond it is still seriously, seriously, seriously hot. This was not supposed to be a Summer World Cup. And I actually don't think I've felt this hot even in summer conditions around Europe. The humidity is staggering. Uh, six days to go, but still not really an influx of fans. There's a lot of service staff 
been flown over, you can tell, from other areas of the world to assist Qatar in delivering this World Cup. They're trying to put on the best face, but it's hard to escape the fact that you still see workers toiling away in these conditions. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be working and doing any sort of manual labor in this sort of climate. It's, it's really impossible to, to stay out for a few minutes, let alone actually do real serious graft in it. Um, so I, I kind of said earlier that it's a bit odd being here because we don't really know what to expect. We don't know what the atmosphere is going to be like in quite a conservative culture that's not used to having an influx of people come in. Um, are a lot of fans actually going to be out and about and, and trying to experience things when there's such a limit and when they're getting told to, you know, be mindful of this and that and be respectful and cuts across everything that I think football fans usually sort of engage in and indulge in uh, when they go to a tournament environment. So yeah, much like you viewers at home, we are still waiting to see and figure out how it's all going to shape up and look. Thanks very much, Melissa. Been good to have you on our first World Cup breakfast show. We'll see you soon.